Let's Nightfall is going to be a new series on my channel. If you've been a subscriber for a while, you know I have plenty of solo Nightfall walkthroughs. Pretty much every strike except for the new Septus Prime that hasn't been the Nightfall yet. And then the Wretched Eye Strike, I didn't do that opening week because I just wasn't a high enough light level. But there are different modifiers every single week. And, you know, sometimes I would change my strategy that I overlaid in those other videos if you did watch any of my other solo Nightfalls that helped you get through a Nightfall for that week. So this is going to be a new series, Let's Nightfall. Every single week, every new Nightfall, I'm going to solo it with you. We're going to go through it together as a walkthrough. So this week, it's a la cool, the Dark Blade. Not a very hard solo, a longer solo this week because exposure is on. And before we get into the other modifiers that are on, for this first part, I always try and run through this. Every single time, regardless. There's checkpoints on the Nightfalls now, and this is at the very beginning of the Nightfall. Do not waste any of your time shooting enemies. Attempt to run through this. This is very easy to run through. You know, it could be a pain if something like Void Burn was on or Arc Burn, because these Acolytes with all their Void and then the Wizards do Arc. But you should be able to run through this about 99% of the time. And once you're past those guys, you're home free. You just got to make it to this other end of the room. If you're brand new to this game and never done the strike before, ignore that wizard. Just jump around if you have to. I always throw a grenade to kind of just have it be distracted. And once the doors are open, you're good to go. Run on through and head up to the next area. So chafe is on, which disables player radar. That's really not that big of a deal for this strike. It's, you know, I guess can be maybe a little annoying for the boss fight at the end, but it's really not too bad. Like I said, exposure's on. Exposure can get annoying and will prolong any strike. Match game's on, which really isn't that too big of a problem. And then Epic is on, and then Brawler, which increases your melee damage. As far as guns, definitely have a sniper on, and I would highly suggest having a rocket launcher on. If you want to rock a machine gun, you want to rock a sword. That's perfectly fine. I think that's kind of a waste on this strike. I would highly suggest going with a rocket launcher and then obviously a sniper rifle and just whatever your best primary is. When you initially come into this room, there's going to be ads in here already. You want to clear out these ads. Your next objective is to either go to left platform or right platform. Doesn't matter which way you go first, just decide which one you want to do first. There's going to be two wizards on each platform. They're not ultras, they're just regular wizards. They have solar shields, so if match game is on like it is this week, I have Galahorn on. Everybody should have Galahorn. Bungie gave that sucker away. So either go left or right. You're taking out the two wizards, and I would take them out from this little middle area. I would not go over there and take them out. You can. It's not like they're tough enemies. But I would suggest just taking them out from far away, especially if you're a lower light level. So what you're going to do is you're going to take out Two wizards, as I'm just making sure it, the coast is clear here. And there is some more knights. I'm going to fast forward here real quick. Just make sure you clear out everything before you start on the wizards. So here we go. You see the wizards. There's going to be two on the left, two on the right. I'm just going to float over rockets. You can snipe them if you want to. But since match game is on, I just galahorned them because I have a void sniper on at the moment. So you can either take out two wizards and then go to that side and then come back, take out the other two wizards and go to the other side. But I would suggest just taking out the wizards on both sides and then deciding which side you want to go to. Okay, so we're going to move over to the left side first. Once you take out your ghost and you scan this object, the shrieker, there's a shrieker on each side, will pop up and you need to take that shrieker out. Along with this, adds are going to spawn in that little middle area where you just were and there's going to be two more wizards that spawn. Those wizards will come over to this area so you need to be prepared to take them out. Once you take out the shriekers, stay here. Let the balls reach the platform and then fall off the back and just sprint around. Sprint around until the balls explode. You will hear the explosion. Once they explode, you need to focus on wizards. The wizards will be on you. At least one will be over here. And once you take out that wizard, the second one you see, here it comes. And they're not ultras, so they're not tough, as I guess that rocket didn't want to lock onto that wizard. Went to that knight instead. And there we go. Left side is done. You are doing the exact same thing on the opposite side. I would stay from deep like I'm doing now and take out any ads that you may see. Special boxes can spawn over here. So feel free to burn through all your sniper ammo, then pop the box. Once you take out some ads and you clear it out, feel free to move back over to the middle and then to the opposite side that you haven't done yet. I'm going to fast forward again here. You're not missing anything. I'm just rotating back to the middle, taking out the last few stragglers. And then I'm going to move over to right side now because I have to complete this side as well. 
I'm going to make sure to pop a pack. Make sure you have rockets. If you need to wait, then just chill out and wait. You control when these ads are going to come out. Again, we're scanning the same object. Then we're going to focus on Shrieker. Once you blow up the Shrieker and the Shrieker balls start making it towards the platform, doing the same exact thing, you're going to hop off the back and just ring around the rosy. You're going to sprint around this platform. Here they come. I'm going to jump off the back or the side, whatever, and then just run around in a circle and they will not hit you. Once they explode, you need to get back up, focus. There will be a wizard on top of your platform. There's first wizard. There's the second one. Second one will start to make its way over here. Hunters, I would be on Night Stalker personally, but if something like Solar Burns on or Arc Burns on, then, you know, rock those subclasses, Blade Dancer and Golden Gun. Titans, I would personally be on Bubble until the boss. If you want to rock an offensive super the whole way through, all the power to you, just a suggestion. And then Warlocks, I would be on Self Res the entire time. If you want to be on Void Bomb or Stormcaller, then do that as well. I just prefer Self Res while soloing stuff as a Warlock. So after you complete both sides, all you're going to have to do is clear out the rest of the ads in the room and you'll be done with this part. I'm going to fast forward again. Super fast forward here, just taking out some ads. There will be a couple knights that spawn. Nothing too overwhelming. Once you clear out the ads, the door will open above the staircase and you're ready to move on. Now, match game is on this week. If match game is not on, I would just stay with Galahorn. Or if you want to switch to a sword, you can switch to a sword. But because match game is on, halfway through, I'm going to switch to truth. And the reason is, is because there is a void shielded wizard that spawns with the third round of ads and she can be very annoying. We're going to do this entire room from all the way back here. These doors will not close. You can chill all the way back here. It's not going to affect anything. Kill everything from deep. With every single nightfall I ever do when I'm doing it solo, try to kill everything from as far a distance as possible. So when the doors open, you'll have these initial ads that are in here. You'll have the Fire Knights and a couple Acolytes. It's nothing too overwhelming. There's only a few of them. Just make sure to be quick. You don't have a bunch of Acolyte eyes popping up. That's the last thing you want is a bunch of those suckers spawning. So for the first initial wave of ads that will spawn, you will have some Acolytes, and then you will have a ton of Scions that spawn on the front bottom area of this room. I would save your super for those scions. You want to make sure that they don't start splitting like crazy because that's just going to get super duper annoying. And we all know that scions can be a big pain in the butt if they just start multiplying and replicating left and right. So I would save your super and save rockets to just go ham and try to take them out as quickly as possible. You see, they're already splitting to be annoying. Once you take out that first part of the first wave, the scions, another wave of scions will spawn. This is the scion wave. Again, use your super on them. If you're on self res, I would pop that sucker and just start chucking a bunch of nades. Here comes the second wave of enemies. Second wave of enemies is going to be a bunch of cabal. The shield guys that do the little blasts, they're not difficult at all. Very, very quick, very, very easy. Again, you're killing everything from deep. I'm going to fast forward again here. All I'm doing is clearing out the ads, but I'm also making sure to time it up that I have rockets ready for the third wave wizards when the wizard comes. So I switched over to truth. All I'm doing now is I'm just waiting on this pack cooldown to go away so I can pop a pack. Okay, we're ready to go. We're all ready for third wave. I'm going to use my super and my rockets. All you got to do is clear out the guys. And once you clear out the final of the second wave, here comes third wave. So there we go. They will be spawning in, and this is going to be Ultra Acolytes along with the Wizard. You need to take out this Wizard. It can be annoying. Like I said, the Shadow Thrall that she will spawn will be the only ones that can come all the way back out to that other room. All the other ads will stay in this room and stay at bay. And there we go. She is down. We got her down. That's fine. Along with this wave, you will have two of the big Blight Orbs, one on the left, one on the right side of the room. Focus on taking them out. Along with the Wizard and the Ultra Acolytes and the Blights, you will have Acolytes on the right and left side with the Blights, and you'll also have a couple of Cabal guys. Fast forwarding again here, all I'm doing is clearing out this wave of ads. Make sure you do have some Heavy available because the fourth and final wave is going to spawn an Ultra at the very front of this room up by the door up there on my right. And once you kill him, the door will open and we'll be able to continue on to the next part of the Nightfall. 
Again, just clearing out ads, clearing out ads, making sure to keep my distance. Exposure's on, so you got to be careful. Okay, fourth wave's going to be coming in here in a second, so I'm going to move on up. I got plenty of rockets. Here he comes. And we're going to quickly take him out. After you take him out, move up near the door. There's going to be an ogre or there'll be a wizard that will spawn with more ads in this room. We are ignoring them. The second this sucker is open, we are dipping. Run past all that crap. Do not waste any of your time taking any of those new enemies out that spawn. For this next part, always run through this part. Always. Do not take out any shriekers. I never, ever, ever take out any shriekers. Once you enter this room, either the left door or the right door is going to open. Okay, left door's opening. That's where we're going to be running to. Because exposure is on, I'm going to clear out some ads before making my run. If exposure wasn't on, I would just make for a run for it. Hunters, if you are on Night Stalker, I'm on Night Stalker right now, switch your melee nade to invis. If you're not on Night Stalker or you don't care about losing your super, I'm just going to waste my super because I'm going to switch to Blade Dancer so I have the kneel down and then I have the melee that's going to let me make this run very, very easily. Warlocks, you have self-res. I would push, clear out a little ads. Do what I'm doing now regardless if exposure is not on or not. But exposure is on this week. So clear out these ads to make the run easier for you. So Warlocks, you should be able to make it about 80% of the way up the room before getting wrecked, if you even get wrecked at all. Then pop your self-res and book it, and you should be able to make it. Titans, this is why I said to be on bubble, or why I suggested to be on bubble up until the boss room. That way, you can use your bubble in here. So you're going to make it up halfway up the room, and then you'll be able to pop your bubble, you know, have blessings of light on, and use that blessings to make it the rest of the way. I'm just going to wait for my melee. Once I have it, I'm going to kneel down. Again, do not shoot any of the shriekers. That is a humongous waste of your time and ammo if juggler's on. Blade dancers, you're going to move up to this ad. Always leave an acolyte left. Once you go uninvis, go invis again with your melee. Titans, you'll pop your bubble about right here as you're about to get wrecked. Then use blessings to move through. Warlocks, you'll probably end up dying at that same point as well if you can't make the entire run through. That's what you're where you would activate your self-res and you'll be able to make it the rest of the way through. Warlocks, you also could do Radiant Skin and pop your super before you're about to die and just use that. Radiant Skin is really good for that room as well. Do not waste your time shooting out those Shriekers, clearing out all the ads. The only reason I cleared out any of the ads is because exposure is on this week. This is another portion that you can run past. I'm just shooting these guys to see if I could get some heavy ammo to drop. I'm going to do another super fast forward here. Not miss anything, just killing some ads, and then I went AFK for a couple of minutes. Hunters, I would switch back to Night Stalker if you did switch over to Blade Dancer to run through the Shrieker room. Titans, I would now switch to Hammers. That's personally what I would use. I would not use Bubble, and I definitely would not use Smash. And Warlocks, I would again stay on self-res this entire strike. Granted, I've been around since day one of Destiny, and the old Nightfalls, if you died, you had to go back to orbit and start the entire Nightfall over again. So now that we do have checkpoints, you know, maybe you don't have to rely on self-res as much as a warlock. That's just kind of me. So if you want to rock an offensive super, yo, more power to you rock an offensive super. I would just suggest running self-res. You're going to be using your sniper heavily in this boss fight with Ala Cool. And this fight is very, very easy. It's just longer by yourself, and exposure is actually kind of mitigated in this strike for the fact that this entire boss fight, nothing can shoot you. It's nothing but thrall and curse thrall. Obviously, if you get meleeed a bunch of times, it's going to take your health down, and that will be annoying, but at least nothing shoots you in here. It's all melee stuff. So the first wave of ads is really the only annoying wave is with exposure on this week. Ignore the boss. You're just going to do some damage on him like you saw me do. Then these ads are going to spawn. Make sure you are constantly moving. In this strike, my number one suggestion would be constantly be on the move. Do not be standing still too long. Again, we cleared out ads. So what we're going to do is do damage on the boss. Once you do damage on the boss and he teleports, and this is a suggestion in my past a la cool solo, run to where he just teleported and nine times out of 10, he's going to teleport where you just were, which he just did. Again, we're doing damage on him. Always be on the move. If he's getting close, just bail. If he's getting close, just bail. Stay as far away as you can as possible. 
So we're doing some more damage on boss. It's about time. We've done enough damage. A second wave of ad should be coming. And there will be Curse Thrall with every subsequent wave after the first wave. Do not shoot the Curse Thrall at all. Do not waste your time. What you're going to do, and what I do every single time, and if you watch my past video, you already know to do this. You run up to the Curse Thrall, and you jump over them. They will in turn explode, also taking out some of the regular Thrall with them, which makes every wave of adds with the Curse Thrall less annoying because you can use the adds against each other. The Curse Thrall, if you're exploding them by running up close to them and then jumping over, you will be taking out the majority of the other Thrall in the process. Once that wave is done, you're going to be doing more damage on the boss. Again, stay as far away as possible. Use Sniper, use Rockets, use your primary. When Alakul teleports, his teleporting is very, very predictable which you will see and I'll be able to explain a little bit more later on in this fight. So again, just doing damage, just doing damage, waiting for the next wave of ads to come. When the ads come, use the Cursed Thrall to kill the regular Thrall. You'll see that again. You see all these, they're all going to come bunched out together. Jumping over, they exploded. That probably took out one to two extra Thrall. That's all you're doing and you'll be constantly on the move, which will help with the boss as well. Run up to him and you have the Ultras. And if Juggler's on or something, you don't want to waste any of your ammo on these friggin' bums. Use the Curse Thrall to your advantage. Doing another quick fast forward here. You're not missing anything, guys. Just running over the Curse Thrall, shooting the regular Thrall if they're around. So here we go. This will be some examples. I'll be able to show you how to predict where he's going to spawn and how to control this fight. It's very, very simple. Okay, so we're doing damage on Allah. Cool. Then you will see him teleport. So he just teleported. Okay? He knows where I'm at. Move to his teleportation. So we just teleported from that spot, so I ran to it. He should spawn where I was, and he just spawned exactly where I was. He will do that the majority of the time. You will be able to control, well, not control, I guess, per se, but you'll be able to know where he's going to be and make sure that he doesn't spawn on top of you. This is another example. Doing damage, doing damage, doing damage, waiting for him to teleport again. And if you lose track of him, just bust out your ghost and it will scan over his body. I'm noticing he's a little too close to me. I don't want him to be that close. Okay, so here we go. I'm turning around again just to do damage on Alakul. He's teleporting. I'm moving to the teleport. He just teleported from this spot and I was across the room. Let's see where he's going to teleport in at. It should be right across. Right across, a little to the left. But that will negate him ever spawning on top of you. Move to where he just was and he should spawn in the general vicinity of where you just came from. I went in Viz so I could pop a heavy pack. If you do have a pop a heavy pack, make sure you do it as he's about to teleport or when he's super far away in the room. He just teleported again. Another example, I'm moving to the teleport and he should spawn in again. His next spawn should be where I just was, which is right in front of me. There he is, he spawned in right where I was. This is gonna help you control this boss fight it really is and help to make sure that he doesn't spawn right on top of you and slam on you. So the boss fight's about to change. Ala cool charges his foes. We blew off his head, his brain showing. Now he's going to be in friggin' Usain Bolt sprint mode. And this is going to elongate this fight because exposure is on. You're not going to want to be standing still very long. As you see, the second that he started charging me, I've been on the move constantly. And with that, he will spawn the final wave of ads. So I'm just going to keep on the move. All I'm trying to do is take out the ads. He just teleported. Okay, so I know I have a few seconds to kill some ads really quickly, and then I need to be back on the move. I went and viz just in case he spawned on me, and he's right behind me. So again, I'm keeping on the move, keeping on the move, constantly be in motion during this strike. It is a very easy boss fight. It really, really is. Just keep on the move. Regardless of exposure being on, it's not a difficult boss fight. Okay, so the majority of the ads are gone for that last wave. Now all I got to do is focus on Ala Cool now. So he's right by me and I got one more Cursed Thrall. That's perfectly fine. Let's take out the Cursed Thrall. Okay, so he just teleported. I'm going to move to his teleport. The same thing we've done the entire strike. And he should spawn across the way. Let's see where he spawns in, right across the way, right where I just was. Lay a couple rockets on him and be on the move. Do not stand still when he's charging like that. You get, you know, three sniper shots off, two rockets, dip. Be on the move, be on the move, be on the move. 
His freaking melee axe slam does absolute work. You do not want to get hit by that thing. It absolutely wrecks. He's a little close to us. That's okay. Perfectly fine. Float away. Okay, so he's teleporting. So we know he just teleported from the left. So we need to move to that area, which I just moved to. But since it was such a small distance away from me, he has, so we see he just spawned right on top of me. And the reason that happened is because when he teleported, we were only about three feet apart. Okay, so it wasn't, you know, me running all the way across the room. So if you are near Ala Kul when he teleports, bail from that area. If you're doing what I'm showing in this video, when I, when what I say to do, you just saw, you know, I ran to where he teleported, but since we were so close, he spawned, you know, four or five feet away from me. So just be aware of that when he's in his charge phase, if he teleports really, so he teleported deep from me, pretty deep. So this is going to be a better teleport. I know that. So I ran to his spot and I'm turning around, flipping a 180. He should spawn on the opposite end and he spawns on the opposite end. So as long as there's a good distance, he's going to teleport where you were as long as you run to his teleport. But if it's too close, just don't even chance it. Just bail to like the complete opposite side of the room and you should be fine. This fight's being a little prolonged. I'm going to fast forward here, guys. It's the exact same thing. I'm just waiting for my super and waiting for my invisnade so I have an opportunity to pop a pack and finish him off real quick. You saw another example there. He's going to spawn deep away and you'll have plenty of time to lay a bunch of shots on him, even in charge mode. So here we go. I'm just waiting for my super. Just this little fast forward, little sped up. Again, you're not missing anything. Just making sure to keep my distance, throwing a grenade. I cut it real close there. You see how much damage. I'm at 397 light. And, you know, he took me down where I was red barn. So be very, very careful. Here we go. Just waiting for my super. It's taken days. It's taken friggin' years. That's his teleport. I know this is going to be a perfect setup. It's going to be a deep teleport. I'll be able to tether. And I should be able to finish him off. Here we go. There's the last couple blows. Last couple shots. And there we go. We've done it. You've done it. Not a very hard solo this week. We got a skeleton key and an exotic. What is this? The game must think I'm not playing it because I'm actually getting hooked up from a nightfall. Let's go open up this horde chest. I need a helmet to help bump me up a little bit. But yeah, it's a very easy solo this week. It really is. Even with exposure on, don't let that deter you at all. And we got the helm. I needed a helmet and a cloak. What is this? This is not the normal nightfall. I'll take it. 400. Let's fast forward to my reward, see what we get, see if our hard-earned effort was worth it. What are we getting? A cloak? I'll take it. What is this? These aren't the normal Nightfall stuff actually giving me things I need. That's it, guys. Hopefully this video was helpful, helps you get it done. Get in there. Pretty easy this week. Have a good one.